there, Josh here from netmark.com. I'm here today to show you a quick and dirty method of calculating customer lifetime value in less than two minutes. Now in order to calculate lifetime value, you're gonna to need to know a few pieces of information about your clients and a few pieces of information about your product. So um, you're gonna to need to know your uh, average revenue, you're gonna to need to know your average cost of goods sold, you're gonna to need to know your average variable cost, you're gonna to need to know your client repurchase rate, and you're gonna to need to know your client referral rate. So let's begin with this example. I own Josh Industries. At Josh Industries, we sell widgets, and it turns out that the average revenue per transaction every time we sell a widget is $100. Our average cost of goods sold is $40. If I take the $40 from 100, I get $60, and that gives me my average gross profit. And my, that means that my gross profit margin is 60%. Okay. Now from the $60, I'm gonna to wanna to subtract my average variable costs. So my variable costs are any costs that vary every time or increase every time I sell a widget. So they, I wouldn't include rent or things like, or utilities, things like that, but I would include like uh, uh, manpower. So say I have a guy downstairs that's in logistics that does all of my shipping and processing and fulfillment for me, and every time we sell a widget, it takes him an hour and I pay him $10 an hour, that's 10 bucks. Uh, per widget, so I'm gonna subtract that from my cost of goods sold, or excuse me, from my average gross profit, and that gives me $50. $50 is my operating margin. Now, if you're trying to be really conservative with your forecasting, $50 is actually a really good number to use for lifetime value. Um, that means that you are going to underestimate the customer's lifetime value and be very conservative with your marketing decisions and any forecasting that you do. But it's not gonna be your real lifetime value. If you wanna know your real customer lifetime value, you're gonna to need to know your repurchase rate. You're also gonna to need to know your referral rate. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this $50 and we're gonna divide it by one minus the repurchase rate. Now I'm not gonna multiply by uh, 1.075 in this example, you have to divide. Now, um, if you divide 50 by one minus 0 0.075, that's the same thing as uh, dividing 50 by 0.925, either way I get 5405. Now if I tried multiplying $50 by 1.075, I'm going to underestimate the customer lifetime value because I'm only gonna capture one repurchase, but I'm not gonna capture the 7.5% that repurchased a second time or a third time or a fourth time, et cetera, et cetera. So I get $54.05. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna do it with the client referral rate. Now I'm gonna say that I've gone back and I've looked and about 10% of my business comes from client referrals. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna take 5405 and I'm gonna divide it by one minus 10% or 0 0.10. That's the same thing as taking 5405 and dividing it by 0.9. Either way, I'm gonna get $60.06. $60.06 is my LTV or my lifetime value.